Gang, gang, gang. <clears throat> Pretty building. Gang, how the heck are we doing? I hope you're all well. Sean the Good Dog, out in the Marigny. Beautiful day. A little, um, it's a shade toastier than I would like. Shade more humid than I'd like, but hey, let's not nitpick. Beautiful day um, in April here. Uh, Jazz Fest coming. I won't be here. Anyways, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about this guy, Ranger, but more importantly, we're here to talk about dogs pulling and dog reactivity in general, not just specific to this dude, not just Ranger, but your dog or dogs you're working with, dogs you're training, dogs you're working in shelter or rescue or whatever it might be. That said, if you're in shelter and rescue, some of the tools that we use, you might not be able to use, but maybe you can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run down how we got this from just a couple days ago. How did we get a dog that's been pulling its owner around, putting her in danger? I'm trying to remember if he's actually like pulled her to the ground or not. But we've had numerous, numerous clients who've been pulled to the ground, had shoulder injuries, hand injuries, face injuries, heel, um, you name it, right? I mean, drug across the street, I mean, pulled to the ground and you know, all sorts of stuff going down. It's, it's super common, right? So you've got the actual like pulling and madness and the, the risk of injury part. And then you've got the reactivity part which is great for damaging your psyche, your mindset, and your overall outlook on life and feeling good about things, right? So, and, and not to mention the reactivity can obviously, like, you got a big dog. Well, a couple things, let's, let's check this out. Big dog, it's being a little one. I will not thread that needle, no way. It's too smart of a... Dog, dog trainer here. Um, anyways, with the reactivity stuff, you could have a redirect, which could injure you. Redirect meaning the dog, when it gets wound up and sees another dog, turns and bites you because, hey, why not? And you're the closest thing and I'm frustrated and annoyed and I don't have enough respect for you to not bite you. Um, no, correction right there. We're demoing it as we're doing it. How you doing? This dog over there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Anyway, so we've got the redirect from reactivity, but we've also got the like get the dog wound up enough about another dog and they're happy to drag you with even more force across the street or to the ground or pull right out of your hand and get themselves run over by a car, hit by a car, or in a dog fight. I mean like the, the bad parts of it go on and on and on, right? The bad parts of pulling dogs and reactive dogs go on and on and on from the actual physical and mental repercussions of the crappiness of it all, but also just to the real, like, look down at the nitty gritty, just the drag of like, nobody gets a dog to be miserable with it, right? Everybody gets a dog so they can enjoy the dog, so they can take him for walks and have fun and be best friends and, and do all that great stuff that dog owning is supposed to be about. So that's why I'm making this video. Once again, another dog coming up close. We'll see. Uh, they're opting not to thread the needle. Smart dog owner. Sidewalks are very narrow here in New Orleans. So like trying to like make a pass like here. Whew. Not for the faint of heart or the smart. Anyways, so what I want to do with this video is I want to talk about this guy, but like I said, in a more general sense, what we did to get this guy to stop being that guy, the guy that was doing all the stuff that I just talked about. He wasn't redirecting and biting, but he was making his owner's life miserable, was dragging her all around. Things were really bad. Um, she couldn't enjoy him at all, couldn't enjoy walks. All that stuff was just toast, right? Really bad stuff. And, and, and like I said, if you read his, his post when he came in, you know, we're a full, we're a full-fledged obedience, you know, kind of like shebang. 
And I was like, so what are your biggest goals? And she said, just get him to stop pulling and be reactive. That's all I want, right? Like, we'll do that. We'll do all sorts of other great stuff, but she like, and she'll enjoy like having a dog that listens and it's all folded into like a respectful relationship. So it's not just like, we're not just spot reducing, just going after one little thing. If you follow us, you know, we're big believers in a comprehensive foundational approach for more serious issues like this to where you get the right relationship to where you got leverage to make good things happen and good choices and respectful dogs, polite dogs, just make better choices all around. So that's it. How the heck did we get here? How do we get here, right? How do we get to a, like, where you can sit and film and navigate dogs walking by to and fro, and this guy is just hanging nice and tough? How do we get here? What were the steps? They're surprisingly easy, and so I wanna just run things down for you guys and in the hopes that it helps some of you who might be struggling with the stuff to be able to navigate it and put the pieces together. So, shows up, he's on a harness, right? Because he was choking himself on whatever tool he was on before. I think it was a slip lead or a martingale, something like that. So, they opted for the harness just because the dog was choking. Of course, that just makes him pull even more. So, harness out the window. Not literally, but if I could, I would. Um, then we fitted in with a prong collar, uh, put a Herm Springer 2.25 on him. Um, how you doing? And then fitted him with e collar, which is a Mini Educator 300. And uh, there's a lot of dog madness typically right here, so hold on. Hold on to your hats. Let's see if we get them. They're usually the shepherds of doom. <laughs> My guy? Nah. He's not signing up for that. So, anyways. Got rid of the harness. Started with the right tools, right? Like, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of tools. A lot of people want to get in to talk about, like, well, you shouldn't need these tools. You shouldn't need this. If walking by school it's gonna get loud you shouldn't need this if the training's done well or blah 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 you should just be able to use your energy if you're calm and you're relaxed the dog should I'm like, it's such a bunch of BS right I've seen plenty of calm relaxed owners with dogs that are actually absolute freaking maniacs so don't feed me that line and I'm, I promise not to feed you guys that line I'm here to help tell the truth about this stuff, right? A calm, relaxed, chilled out owner with the right tools. Woo, now we're talking. Now we're getting somewhere. But a calm, relaxed, chilled out owner with a dog on a harness for a slip lead, might as well just be a telephone pole. They're calm and relaxed, right? Anyways, so first thing, get the right tools on board. We got 2.25 Herm Springer prong collar, and then we got the Mini Educator 300 on him, right? Got them all fitted up, got them in a good space. It is a German Shepherd. <laughs> Kids, they love when I walk by with dogs. Um, so, first things first, right? Then, we head out on a walk. No, I'm sorry, first he goes in the crate. So, this goes feeds into kind of my leverage concept where uh, I just posted something about it. It's in the book, it's in blog posts and videos. You'll hear me talk about it everywhere. Leverage is everything, right? So. I've got a disrespectful, bratty shepherd. First thing I do, put him in the crate, do the crate exercise where I give him the opportunity. Snotty's over here. Mm -hmm. yep. Give him the opportunity to come jetting out. He tries because he's a pushy, bratty shepherd. And I slam the crate door nice and firm on him. And he goes, whoa, 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 who do you, do you know who I am? I'm like, yes. I know exactly who you are. And we do the exercise until he stops doing that. That's the first bit of leverage, and it's the first bit of attitude adjustment, and it's the first bit of relationship adjustment. There's usually a really bad dog here, too. I know where they all are. God, I got all their numbers. So, so the crate exercise is the first bit of leverage, right? attitude, relationship, respect, the whole shebang, and de-escalation. Just getting the dog to actually like chill out, 
take off some of the edge and then also start to look at you for permission. Aha, now we're getting somewhere. Permission, what? You mean I have to wait for your okay to come out of the crate? Leverage, cool, right? Told you this stuff was simple. It's too simple. So then fit them with his tools and we're gonna head out on a walk because his walk is as big as you. So we head out on the walk and he wants to pull and do his thing. He gets to like the front door. I open the front door. He tries to jet out. I give him a nice firm pop on the prong collar and he goes, what? You know who I am? I'm like, yes, I know exactly who you are. How are you doing? Good. And, um, sweet old guy. And um, so then I step back. I do what I like to call give the dog the invitation, which is something I also do at the crate. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about because you checked out things that I posted. So giving the invitation means giving the dog the opportunity to make the mistake so you can actually correct him and work on it. So that means at the crate, you open the door and you step back and give him the space to make the mistake. You don't just hover over it. Same thing goes with the front door. You open the front door and you're like, what would you like to do? And until the dog makes a great decision, you don't, you're not done with your threshold exercise or your crate exercise, right? Does that make sense? Give the dog the invitation, let him make the mistake, correct, get everything in the right spot. Ah, front door means the same thing as the crate. Ah, so I can't just jet out and say F you. I've got to actually wait until you give me permission to go out. Okay, okay. Well, actually he didn't say okay. He said the same thing again. He's like, don't you know who I am? <laughs> he was still in that mode. And um, once again, I answered, I do know who you are. So then we head out on the walk using this. So if you've watched like my e-collar um, e collar heel with Fusa the GSD, you'll, uh, you'll know how we use the e-collar for uh, e-collar heel. If you've got our DVDs, you know how we use it for that. Basically, we use the prong collar as guidance, very light guidance. It's not really a prong collar walk at all. The prong is, t is, is just there to give directional information to the e-collar. So, you start working at low levels, teaching this out of his mind, Shepard, wherever he is behind me, we're at potty, potty break here, um, to slow down and walk in position. So now we're starting to cultivate a heel position, right? He just wants to go wherever he wants. And if you followed his video, you know he just wanted to go sideways because he couldn't go front and just do his thing. So he was trying to throw his own tantrums, do his own thing, I'm trying to keep the wind down for you guys. So over and over again, low level e-collar training about what heel position is, right? Using the prong collar as directional light guidance e-collar button on. I'm not going to go through the whole process of how this works. You have to watch the videos because otherwise this would be 10 years long. But low level e-collar training for the heel position. What starts to happen? Well, over the course of about, I don't know what it's about, a 45 minute walk that we took. No, I'm talking about an hour and change walk we took. But in 45 minutes, he was in a really good space. He was walking about 70, 80% in a, in a nice heel position. But more importantly, it was the attitude had shifted again. He was relaxing, he was de-escalating, and what was he starting to do? Starting to look at this guy holding the leash and going, oh, I, I have to be here? Yes, you have to be here. Don't you know who I am? I'm the shepherd that goes zigzagging, running everywhere and doing whatever I wanna do and barking at dogs. Like, you can't tell me what to do. You're not the boss of me. Well, actually, I am the boss of you. You're going to walk just like this over and over again we repeat it heel guidance off the button heel guidance off the button go through it until he's in an awesome space once he understands what that position means then i go to corrections which means i slightly raise the level or more than slightly depending on where his state of mind is at and start correcting for heel position. Now I'm just giving a tap instead of pressing and holding at a lower level to guide him. Now he knows what the position is. Now I say, I'm holding you accountable. Heel right next to me. You step forward out of, out of the position. I repeat the command, tap the button, make sure I find the level he cares about enough to slow down and put his highly annoyed German Shepherd self right back in position. What is this creating? It's starting to create a dog that's in a very, very, 
different gear. Far more polite, like I said. All of these things are working as leverage, right? We haven't even dealt with dogs yet. All we're dealing with is leverage. Do you guys get all this stuff? We're dealing with the leverage. So it started with the crate, then at the thresholds, then I started teaching heel. All of this stuff is creating leverage of, I need to listen to you. I need to listen to you. I need to listen to you. I need to be polite. It's not just my world. I don't just get to do what I want. Okay, respect, respect, respect. So it's building and building and building, right? Once again, we've now moved to corrections for heel because the dog knows what it is. I'll still guide him back with the leash if he needs help, if he's confused or if he's just pushing against it. I'll still on the first couple of days correct with a pop, tap, and then pull him back, guide him back. But at this point, now we've got leverage. We've got a way different shepherd than we first had that arrived a couple days ago, or that day, uh, if we're talking about this walk, but a couple days ago from now. So now that we're at the, at the point of being able to correct for heel, he's familiar with the sudden pressure, the quick tap, right? The quick correction. And now I start connecting no or pairing no with looking at dogs, right? So now he's in a good position doing his thing. Our leverage is in place. He looks at a dog and instead of exploding in a millisecond and going through the roof, I've got all this cushion, all of this time because I've built up leverage. His mind is in a totally different gear and he looks at the dog differently and he's like, and he starts to look, I can tell his ears come up, he starts to load, but instead of going zero to a hundred in a split second, he goes zero to about five, six, seven, and he takes a little while longer because I got leverage. And now I say no, and I tap the button at a level high enough for him to go look away. And then if he does it again, slightly up higher, no. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Rinse and freaking repeat over and over and over again. If you didn't do anything else but what I just suggested, you would sort out 99% of any of your walk issues or whatever walk issues there might be out there, right? With reactivity and things like that. Forget about like sit, down, place, recall, all those other great exercises that are really helpful for your dog. I'm talking strictly about this walk issue. And if you just did what I just suggested right there, oh no you don't, pussy shepherd, just because I'm talking doesn't mean you get to just pull around. So if you did just what I suggested, crate exercise and you did it right, you did it firm and you were consistent, you gave the invitation, and you did the same thing with the right tools on, prong, e-collar, you knew how to use them both, you gotta learn, you gotta study, then you built leverage at the front door, oh I've gotta listen, okay, more leverage, more leverage, getting more polite, getting more courteous, looking to you more and more for information, being less of a brat, and then you go out and you teach heel. Oh my God, I've got to walk like this? Like in this kind of structured position? Are you crazy? This is impossible. No, it's not impossible. Look at you doing it. 45 minutes later, he's walking like a champ. We correct, we start going to corrections. We start correcting for looking at dogs. Always, 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 the most important thing is to correct early and high enough to where you beat him to the punch, the emotional punch capping rather than chasing. Most owners chase. The dog looks, the owner waits to see if the dog's gonna escalate, so now they're slow and behind the dog emotionally, and then they correct at too low of a level, and so they underwhelm the dog, the dog just lifts off and gets even worse. Cap it. Get there. It's the split second it starts to happen with a level that the dog cares about enough to stop doing the behavior, which means turning away from the other dog, right? capping versus chasing. Another favorite saying of ours is too low, too slow. Don't be one of those owners. If you just do this, and all these you can find on our free videos, you can find the crate, you can find thresholds, you can find e-collar heel, you can find the whole shebang. If you just do this, and you're consistent, and you make sure that you either get professional help or you educate yourself on how to use these tools correctly, you can eliminate all of that monkey business I started this video off with in the first place. All that pulling, all that reactivity, all that mayhem, all that discomfort, all that displeasure, all that danger, all that possible hurting yourself, your dog getting hurt, get rid of that stuff. Guys, it's not that freaking hard. You can do it. You can have an awesome dog and you can have awesome walks. You gotta use the right stuff. Everything I just described, all right? I hope this helps. Anybody has any questions, hit me up. That's how we got Ranger out of danger, and that's how we got 
where we got it.